vice chairman munyabanga mukuru ba fp ringotanyi abayobozi ba komiseri bumuryango bayobozi bandi mwese muri hano cyane cyane abashitsi bacu bahagarariye imitwe ya politique yo mu bihugu byishuti byabavandimwe batutse hirya no hino nabayobozi rero dio mitwe yindi ya politique ya chano mu gihugu tubana nabo nore z'umuryango FPR inkotanyi mes ndabashuje kandi ndabashimi Ajira ngo mbanze mvuge ko ahantu manyuze kenshi I've been here before in this kind of place Unfortunately I never get used to it. Ntabwo mpamenyera. Mpanyuze kenshi ariko si mpamenyera. Ndaza kubabwira icyo nshaka kuvuga. Eh mbere hano kotubanye igihe kirekire ibyo dukoze hamwe eh ikizere tugirirana imirimo myiza dukorera igihugu cyacu twikorera kandi anyuma bikaza kugira bitya bikongera bikagusha ahantu hamwe ubundi nari nkuye kuba mpagaze hano uyu munsi dushakisha uburyo ubuyobozi bwa RPF cyangwa se cyane cyane umuyobozi utoranywa na RPF kuzayihagararira mu gihe cy'amatora bipiganwa yuzayobora igihugu yewe akazi kanje aruguhereza undi inkoni nari nitwaje cyangwa se nari mbatwariye mu busanzwe niko byari bikuye kuba bigenda kuko niko mbere byari byagenwe ariko mu minsi yashize mwara bihinduye muvuga ko bizaba uyu munsi bizaba ukundi cyangwa bizaba ibindi
nta ruhare nabigizemo uruhare nabigizemo no kubibemerera kubera ko mwabinsabye ari no bundi yagiye biwa ntabwo ari bwambere nta nubwo pressure yo kutabyemera cyangwa se yo kungira inama yo kutabyemera yari nke ntabwo yari nke but it probably was less informed and meaningless less informed than the pressure for me to accept it now that you brought me here to accept it the only alternative i have which i'm glad to inform you as i have always done in the past i will give it and you my all I always do it to the best of my ability. That's what I'm saying. But here is the deal. I also want to think about it. You may not give me the answer now. but i want you to think about it and maybe find an answer as we go forward eh gasama gera uri he hariko ndashaka ko ibyo mvuga mu cyongereza ninta ndashaka gukoresha indi mizombi ibyo ndibuze kuvuga mu cyongereza si bikanye bagera cyangwa si mbivuge neza mu kinyarwanda ndashaka ko bitaza ho gucika nawe so i want you to think about it and i said here is a deal the deal is Let's assume and agree that the seven years to come, most likely, because since we have decided here, and uh, I know the strength of our PF. Uh, it means we are going to emerge with the victory that's fine but let's assume that in the seven years to come and i want you to assume so or think about it or maybe work along these lines is my request to you that 
we do things either differently or better or work harder so that the seven years coming give us some kind of transition. And so that what made you ask me to stay longer maybe can be addressed in these seven years. So I want you to think about it. I'm not uh, putting much pressure on you. I'm just requesting you to think about it, because you must think about it. Uh, and that is how realistic maybe we can and should be. Uh, so that after seven years, we are not back maybe to a situation where either we are taken by surprise or... And I think it's a fair point I'm trying to make to you. Why don't we really double our efforts to do things that I know everything is about timing among other things. So we had to give ourselves time. We've been giving ourselves time. That's fine. But you don't leave everything just to time. It matters also what you do in the time. So I want us to do as much as we can in the seven years ahead to reduce the kinds of worries, of needs, to bring us to this place again that I said, much as I have been there before so many times, I never get used to it. But that means, and I'm saying, there is a lot of work for us to do, and we are going to do it. And you have asked me to stay, and I have stayed. <laughs> and um, I, I, I've also said, I'll give it everything I have, as I have done before, or maybe I also double my efforts so that together we can keep reducing the need, those factors that compare you to ask me to continue to stay. I'm not putting a deadline. I'm not putting a precondition. I'm just asking you to fight with me, as we always have, as we always have done, so that we overcome these challenges 
that compel you to ask me to stay. I hope I'm with you on this. I mean, at least you understand me. You understand what I'm saying. Right? Um, but before I go further, let me go back to our friends who are here today, who came from uh, brother and sister and friendly political parties, movements, and countries. I, I wanted to thank you not only for being here today with us and uh, the profound uh, statements you made. But also for having been there with and for us in our complicated history. starting with the neighbors, Tanzania, Uganda, CCM, NRM, beyond, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, Angola, South Africa, and ANC. You know, Rwanda, uh, RPF, at, uh, and ANC at one point, ANC is a much older organization, very old, but at one point, we crossed the path uh, for our two countries when uh, South Africa was getting the best they could get in their whole history. We were getting the worst anybody could get in their history. And they happened at the same time. 94, South Africa was becoming free and independent. In 94, Rwanda was sinking in a more or less a bottomless pit. But we still shared a lot. There are many, I don't, uh, I will not go into details even for the sake of not missing out on some detail that should have been stated and, and, and uh, let it not be misrepresented or, or misunderstood. But I wanted to thank those uh, brothers and sisters or visitors who are here with us today and the meaning for us of today. And as I said earlier, while something else could have happened, it 
different from what has just happened today. Had it happened the way it should have happened before you made the changes, I would still have been very, very happy. But that it hasn't happened, and now a different decision has been made, and I have agreed to it, I'm still very, very happy. Now, with all that I have said, I have uh, a message for the young people, the majority of our population, and I know the majority of the populations of other countries represented here, In our case, so that what I started with area of the seven years I talked about is maybe to be achieved to the young people. You know, when we took over in 94 and took over a country that uh, had been deprived of almost everything and started rebuilding, there are people who had just been born or others were still very young for those who were, say, 10, 94, you understand now, 23 years after, they are 33. Those who were 15, that's 38. Those who were 18, that's 41 years old. men and women, by the way, the 38, the 41, or maybe the 33, but I don't wish that to happen yet. But the 38 and the 41 and then above, I think you can be president. But there is a caveat here. It's not just being president. It's not just having a right to be president. Rwanda wants and needs the right president. It wants and needs and deserves the right leaders. So there is something you have to do. You have to invest. You have to invest in yourselves. You actually have to participate. You have to be participating in politics. You know, I have always had this kind of stuff where people say, no, no, that is politics. Me, I can't uh, get involved in politics. Well, you don't get involved in politics. The next day, bad politics takes care of you. <laughs> the next day, you are led by people who 
you don't deserve. So it's not just about being leaders, it's not just about being presidents. Because there have been and there can be very bad leaders. If you are led by bad leaders and you are from Rwanda, I don't think you need any explanation. We've been there before. We have been there before. Does anyone want to be back again to that situation? No. So, young leaders, young people, you Rwandans, men and women, one aspire to be a leader, even a president. But above all, aspire to be a good leader. Because that's what your fellow Rwandans need and deserve. Because even where we have been, that we know. So when you are studying, when wherever you go, neighboring countries, other parts of Africa, beyond our continent, you should be able to understand that growing into what you need or what Rwanda needs isn't something you get to just by accident. You have to be selective. You have to choose. The kind and manner of upbringing that you want, that we want, and that is helpful to be a leader. And by being a leader, I mean you affect others. You affect others. It's so not just you. And that's why it, 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 you know, when we remember what we've gone through in the last 23 years. We have had many visitors. I've had many interactions. We have been everywhere. Remember, there are people who will come to you and say, they have the power over you. They are better than you. Therefore, they have advice for you as to what you should be. Think about it. When you've been to school in those universities out there, and you've been growing up studying, learning. Do you really get, at some point, to believe that somebody else should be having such power over you? Or that should be the one to write the script you should be following as to what you finally become? 
Do you ever think about it? I think somebody who has been brought up properly and well simply rejects that kind of thing. You reject it. No, I see people saying, oh, they are coming to take young people to go and teach them how to be future leaders. How, how do they teach you to be future leaders? By transplanting you from your own values, culture, environment, problems, and so on. They go and teach you to become what kind of leader? What kind of leader do they teach you to become? I think it would be fair to say, OK, go out there, look at what pleases you and what befits you, and uh, pick whatever you want, but you don't have to be shown what to pick. In fact, that's even what we have been learning from the same people. Because they teach us so much about freedoms. Therefore, your freedom, mine, to choose, to pick and choose. If you start by denying me my freedom to pick and choose, and you want to pick and choose for me, that's a contradiction already. And therefore, I cannot follow you. I cannot believe you. But it has to be a proper brought-up person to see that point and believe that. And it starts with you. It starts with our conviction. And it started with, at least as far as we are concerned, the RPF. It started with why the RPF came to being in the first place. Otherwise, what, what is the meaning of RPF to us? When you are saying RPF, when you are talking about RPF, what, what is the meaning? It's not the red T-shirts and black and blue and white. It's not that. It's what is in our heads and in our hearts. It's about the choices we have to make. It's the things we have to do. It's our dignity that we have to stand up for. And I want to believe, I want us to believe that uh, when I am saying this, and I'm rightly sort of confining myself to the RPF or one, because that's where I belong, to begin with, I also want to believe that it may be this is what we share across the whole continent. That's what we share. is for all of us Africans.
leaders of uh, RPF, cadres, uh, and uh, our distinguished uh, visitors, and brothers and sisters, I think Rwanda and Africa need to change the narrative. No one else owes it to us. We owe it to ourselves. The narrative that, uh, you see, even with uh, all kinds of definitions, democracy and opposition and freedom and da da da, th these are not textbook issues. Actually, these have become life and death issues. And I don't think you will find people deferring so much as to the issues of what? No. It will mainly be the issues mainly of how and maybe sometimes why. What do I mean? I haven't had much debate on whether people should work towards prosperity. I think everybody agrees, don't you think? When you talk about prosperity, everybody say, I'm there. When you talk about stability, issues of social, economic transformation, everybody says, that's what we've been looking for. If you are talking about good governance, if you are fighting corruption, everybody says, that's what I stand for. Security, everything, everybody agrees. The problem comes when we arrive at the how. How do we get there? How do we achieve it? Even then, sometimes, the how issues are not very complicated. It gets more complicated when the how to get there is no longer collective. It becomes individualized, it becomes personal. Somebody starts thinking about personal benefits as if personal benefits should be conflicting with the benefits of all of us. But if we believe that the best way for us is for all of us to benefit, and not just one against others, or a few at the expense of others, if that is clear, then there are no difficulties. So in our upbringing, the RPF, in our struggle, in our daily conversation, not that we have necessarily been entirely successful. Yes, there are those who 
time and again go their ways, that's okay, but I think we've been brought up and have believed that the benefits for all of us are better than the benefits for some of us. That's the culture. That's the belief. That is the ideology we espouse. You step away from that and do something else, the opposite, you are creating problems. And, and also for yourself. Because you have also discovered that even benefits for the few, sometimes their lifespan is very short. Yes, it's very short. So distinguished cadres uh, and uh, brothers and friends, all of these things we read about, we hear, we are concerned with, at least the Rwandan story, a bit of it, the little, the part of it, not so big, but I think becomes uh, an indicator of what is possible, of what is doable by people. And you, you've got to do it. If you don't do it, it doesn't happen. You just got to do it. Nothing will happen if you don't do it. For the good Christians, better than me, <laughs> for the Muslims, for whatever religion, whatever tribe, well, for those who believe, it doesn't matter how many times you go to pray. Nothing will happen until you do it. Absolutely. Doesn't matter whether you do it 12 times, 20 times a day, it won't happen. That may cover only a small part, which has to do with luck. Let's assume everything has a part that goes with luck. I think that's what goes with the prayers. But for everything else, you got to do it. You just have got to do it. Well, even non-believers, I think sometimes get some luck. But always they have to do things in order to be where they want to be. And uh, you know the RPF, this is our daily conversation. This is the conversation, conversation I want the young people to participate in, to be brought up in, to believe in, so that at least we can, to a great extent, 
secure our tomorrow. So, you have nominated me as the flag bearer of RPF. Let's put aside the whole history of how we came to be here for a while. I'll just ask you again. We've got to be with each other in this fight for our better tomorrow. And uh, there won't be shortcuts. You go to do it. Asante san. Tunawashimia chani. Tunawashimia